actually what I thought about doing was to share with you, to begin with, all the advice I heard growing up, starting my career. That sounded really good at the time, that in hindsight is really bad advice. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to start with a, a favorite, which is follow your passion. Okay. So this is an interesting one, because I, I love what I do for a living. Uh, but when I was a kid and thinking about what I wanted to do in life, I really wanted to be in the NBA. If you ask me what my passion was, it was sports. I wanted first I wanted to be in Wimbledon, I was playing tennis, and I started playing basketball. And people say, oh, follow your passion, but you know, you could be a coach, right? Or, or, or you could be a commentator, or you could be a writer in sports. So, no, I want to take the shot in game seven in the NBA finals. That would be what I'd be passionate about. Well, that's not a very good career choice. It actually requires talent that uh, I don't have. <laughs> you know, you didn't, you didn't get my bio, but that wasn't quite on the resume. So, yes, it's, um, you have many passions in life. And I don't think people are so one-dimensional that I'm only passionate about this. People say, you know, there's, there's a handful of people like Tiger Woods that from age three, he's on TV hitting a golf ball at age 28, you know, he's, he's already anointed the best golf and it's that linear path from day one. He was born to do it, and not to a shape to do what he was doing, and he was born to do it, and he had phenomenal talent, and he had the entire package, and it's this really linear, crisp career path that very, very few people in life actually get. The truth is, you can be passionate about a lot of things. Michael Jordan was passionate about baseball, and he's a phenomenal athlete, one of the best in the world. He can't hit a ball. It's okay, he's passionate about it, but what do you do for your career? So I wanted to share some advice because you can live to work or you can work to live. And I'm not here to place a value judgment as to which one is better. I happen to love work. If I do not enjoy my day to day in terms of working, I will not work. I mean, that, that's just the way I am. I have to be passionate. I've taken two years off where that, you actually have to get a little bit further in your career to do that without you know, living down here. <laughs> but, you know, if you're not passionate about what you do, I'd actually rather just take a break and think what is going to get my juices flowing. And if I'm not passionate at every moment of the day, I'd rather not be working. Now, I, at the end of the day, if you, if you really expand your horizons and think carefully, you could be doing many, many different things. But what you choose to do for your career, I got this advice from a friend's father uh, when I was uh, actually in high school, and it really rings true to me today, much more than follow the passion, which is people tend to be passionate about what they're good at. So what do you do best in this world that is valued by a career, by an industry? And think broadly. Someone says, I was born to be a doctor. No, you're a smart person. You could be a doctor, you could be a lawyer, you could be a writer, you could be a teacher. That's a skill set. But what specifically do you have, whether it's your assets, your skills, that you do best? You don't have to be best in the world, but what do you do best? And find a career that matches that. Because this is my, this is my don't be William Hung advice. <laughs> hey, he's passionate about entertainment. That is a really tough industry. I'm sure there's a lot of people here that will be speaking. I know Teddy Z's friend of mine, he'll be speaking a little bit later. If you have phenomenal talent, if you have a great network, if you have mentors that will help, up, help you in your career, you've got a small chance of success. And maybe you should take it. But if you don't have talent, unless you're phenomenally connected, and your dad basically just makes movies and throws you into them, that's is somewhat common in Hollywood, you don't have a chance. And that's probably not what you should be doing for your career. So, you know, it's the, don't be on the American Idol rejects. You know, think about it, hundreds of thousands of people applied for that. And you look at it afterwards, you kind of go, scratch yourself, what were they thinking? And in all seriousness, I find that most people are somewhat blind about their strengths and their weaknesses. I mean, if you ask yourself right now, describe yourself, what do you do best in this world that's valued by the market? And it could be in a nonprofit, it could be journalism, whatever that industry is. 
Do you know your strengths right now? Are your strengths still developing? You probably have the seeds of it. But I find that in your weaknesses, what, how much time do you spend on your developmental areas? I, I mean, I have a, I have a copywriter that uh, she feels very uncomfortable public speaking, I found out. That public speaking is the number one fear. Greater than fear of flying, greater than fear of death. And she's scared to death about public speaking. And she wants to really work on it. And she's spending all this time on it. And I asked her why. Are you going to do a lot of public speaking? She's like, well, it's just a fear and I want to overcome it. I go, you're a really phenomenal writer. What we really value about you is your writing. I'm happy for you to develop your, your weaknesses. But if you spend 80% of your time developing your weaknesses versus 80% of your time developing your strengths, you will be in completely different places in your career a few years later. When, I, I have a responsibility at Eagles of about 300 people that look to myself or the people that report to me or my team for career advice and career management. And what I, what I ask people to do is do what you do best at. And for what you're bad at, let's put someone on your team that's really good at the thing that you, you're really bad at. Because things hum, people enjoy themselves. There's energy in the room when you're successful. And you're successful doing the things that you're actually good at. And you can develop passion around that. So it's kind of a different way of, of spinning it. So, you know, I, I look at my uh, coders. They, I, I care about, they write exquisite code and they work well on teams. Do I really care about his, you know, his desire to be an artist or a musician? I say, that's fantastic, I appreciate all that. That's not what I want you to spend your time on. So, even when we're managing people, a lot of my managers spend their time on the people that are most problematic within the organization. I say, you should be spending 80% of your time making people, taking their strengths and making them better at their strengths. If you're spending 80% of your time with people in the areas where they're problematic, this organization does not function. So when you think about your careers, I would start there. And when it starts with a really brutal self-awareness. Because if you, are you, are you, how many people think they're really in control of their weaknesses? They know exactly what they are. Anyone? Think of your good friend. Think of your best friend. How many of you know their weaknesses? Can you describe them? Honest. Yeah, majority. Right? If you're not aware, the funny thing about it is I found is everyone around you is completely aware of their weaknesses. If you if you can't look in the mirror, and it's hard, it's really hard. Look to the people that you trust, anyone that works with you. Honestly, they may not know your strengths. The, the people closest to you probably will you know your strengths and will know some of your gifts better than... And you, like my brother is the funniest guy I know. But if you talk to 100 people, the first word out of their mouth is something like, he's hilarious, he's the funniest guy. It, it's really obvious. If you look at his developmental areas, you know, in life or what have you, you know, we all have weaknesses. Friends will give you... Everyone knows but yourself. Oftentimes, the only way you can see yourself is through other people. So you need to find someone that you trust to give you that feedback. And it's a good idea to do that every couple of years. Even in my organization, I always find someone that I consider someone with a, a little lack of an antenna. Right? There's not as much of a filter between what they think and what comes out of their mouth. <laughs> and I look to that person to give me advice. And I ask them, how do you think things are going? And boom, they're off and running. And I get truth out of that. And the more experienced they are, the more insightful their truths are about myself and about my team. So it's, uh, you know, I happen to be really bad at a lot of things. But I have certain gifts that in this society, in this industry, because of the advent of the internet, it's very marketable. You know, I, was, I love building businesses. I love managing teams. 2,000 years ago, I'd probably be, you know, roadside kill somewhere. <laughs> but in this society, luckily, it's pretty valuable. And I was born in the right country at the right time. I will not start a business without someone like Frank Monaster, my current president CLO, or John Sun, who's my former partner at Casting Group. 